So folks, today I wanted to talk about Steve Bannon and what he's up to. And you can follow him on Rumble. One of the ways that you can follow Steve Bannon if you want to. Um, but for years, Steve Bannon has been pro-Russia. Tucker Carlson has been pro-Russia. Donald Trump has been pro-Russia. And you might ask yourself, and I'm sure you have, why are they pro-Putin? What do they have to gain by that? What do they have to gain? And what they have to gain, folks, is this in a nutshell. In an autocracy, they can achieve the goals that they want to achieve. That's the only way that they can fully achieve the goals that they want to want to achieve. Basically, it, it comes down to a white power type of society, anti-immigration, the big replacement theory, you know, behind that whole push for anti-immigration. And ultimately, I think what they're looking for is the level of control over the population like Putin has. That's why they're pro-Putin, because if you think about it, an autocracy is the only way that they can achieve those extreme goals that they want to achieve. Now, they've cashed out, believe it or not, to put it that way, Trump has cashed out on democracy and Steve Bannon has cashed out on democracy. They just haven't told you. I mean, the goal is the autocracy and the camouflage of that goal, folks, is isolationism. Isolationism is where they don't, they, they preach the theory that we should not be getting involved in anything over our borders. Isolationism is the camouflage. Autocracy is the goal. Now, in preface to the video that I want to show you today, and uh, the video encapsulates how how scared they are right now. Steve Bannon and uh, Jack Posobiec, who's on his show talking uh, at length. And, and they're actually afraid because they, they see something on the horizon that might be happening that, that upsets the autocracy potentially of Russia and the control that they're trying to exert over Ukraine. And this troubles them because again, the autocracy is their way forward. Putin is the blueprint. Now, in preface to this, I have to show you this. So, Victoria Newland, this is from the AP today. Victoria Newland is the third highest ranking U.S. diplomat and frequent target of criticism for her hawkish views on Russia and its actions in Ukraine, will retire and leave her post this month, the State Department said Tuesday. Now, they've accused her because she has a background in that area going back to the 1900s when Russia controlled Ukraine. They control, they're basically accusing her in a nutshell of using her role in the third highest ranking diplomat at, uh, in the United States. And they're accusing her of using that level of control to affect the change, the regime change ultimately in Russia. So they're accusing her of, of using that role. <laughs> and I mean, it's insane stuff. It, it really is. She, they're accusing her of not caring about the Ukrainians, which is insane because obviously her family came from that area. On one side, they're saying they're using that role. She's using her role for a regime change in Russia, but yet she doesn't care about Ukrainians. But yet they, they admit that yes, she came from that area. <laughs> I mean, this, this is just weird, wacky stuff that Steve Bannon puts out and it's, uh, it's borderline insane, but folks, that is the, that, that, that's the, the scheme of it. So listen to what they're talking about here. So li listen to, uh, Jack Posobiec go on about what he's afraid of that is on the horizon. We'll talk about it as it continues. Got these people in there. In the German, uh, in the German high command now, in the German military, talking on unsecured phone lines that are easily hackable by the Russians in a, apparently a Singaporean hotel. It okay, so think about that. Germans are talking on unsecured lines 
that are hackable. They've made it easy for Russia to know what the hell they want to do. And this is by design. This isn't some little slip. The Russians, the Germans, excuse me, are not stupid. They did that by design, my friend. If you listen to some of this stuff, it dials into a conference, and these people are talking loosey-goosey about how we're not going to be able to move into what they say, and, and this what's the biggest thing lately, and Macron even said it, you, you know, kind of said the quiet part out loud, NATO troops in Ukraine coming in to stabilize what they call Ukraine's western flank, potentially moving the regime from Kiev all the way to Lviv. Stabilize. Stabilize. How do you think that Ukraine is going to shed themselves of this invasion that, that's by Russia and Putin that's killed countless numbers of Ukrainians? Think about it. How do you think they're going to be able to stop this because Putin clearly is not going to negotiate. It's going to take a stabilizing force like the UN to be able to do this, to be able to say, hey, what, you know, listen, you know what, the game's over, Putin. We're going to provide air defense over Ukraine. It's over. You're not going to do this for the next 100 years. It's not going to happen. And you know what, that $300 billion that you have overseas, once we stabilize the area, that's what's going to rebuild the Ukraine. Setting up a quote unquote green zone. They want French troops. They're talking Polish troops already, of course. Poland, of course, a lot of history used to control that area. And then the Germans, what are they talking about? Not attacking in Russia. They're talking about attacking Crimea. They're talking attacking directly onto some of these infrastructure lines so Russia's war fighting will be prevented. What does this all mean? NATO shooting war with Russia. And then you had the Finnish prime minister yesterday saying, oh, if we are going to go into war, it... So this is where his whole theme of isolationism is showing itself. You know, we, we should not get involved with Russia. In it, and it's all under the camouflage of isolationism. Looks like we are going to go to war with Russia. Of course, the Finns. The Finns hate the Russians, and the Russians don't have any love lost yep. back for back for them from the Winter War, of course, from World War II. Steve, this is a is yep. a massive cauldron. Victoria Newland set this all up. I would not be surprised if she turns her head up somewhere in Europe while all of this is going to crap around her because wow. she doesn't care about Zelensky. She doesn't care about the Ukrainian people or how many of them have died on her yep. watch. She cares about regime yep. change. So, I, I mean, how they spin this stuff and how people believe it is beyond me. But, folks, it, it's going to be up to the greater part of humanity to call an end to what's happening in Ukraine. And he's he's obviously afraid of that because they're pro-Russian. They don't want to see anything bad happen to Russia, the autocracy that it is. Because again, yeah, that's exactly what they'd like to see here. Maybe not quite so much to the level of Putin, but folks, that is the goal. That's the goal. And let's just call it what it is, folks. They just want to see an autocracy. And I, th I think that they should be afraid. I mean, if, if, if they're afraid of Ukraine being stabilized and rebuilding itself, let them be afraid of that. I mean, th there's no way that we can let this continue. There has to be an end. And I think that we're going to see the chips falling into place to make this happen. We're going to have to force Putin's hand in this situation.